the online show for pre-chiropractic and chiropractic students, and I'm Nathan Cashin. Tonight, we are going to hear from Angela Choa, who is a 10th quarter student at Life Chiropractic College West, who transferred from the University of Western States, which is where I'm at. So I'm super excited to hear about his story. Um, before we begin, i got to give a quick shout out to Spinal Column Radio, who contacted me recently and invited me on the show. So if anyone's listening from that, welcome. And uh, please check out exploringchiropractic.com and let me know uh, what you think. So Angel Ochoa, uh, who is no stranger to Spinal Column Radio too, having been on the show, or been mentioned at least a couple times, uh, posted a video. It's been almost exactly one year, and it's had nearly 2,000 views on YouTube and is still getting responses just about every week. You can find a link to it uh, on the show notes for this episode or on the Google Plus community or just search YouTube for My Chiropractic Story. So Angel, thank you so much for sharing your story uh, on YouTube and getting me interested and joining me on Exploring Chiropractic. Of course, thanks for having me. We're also joined uh, via some Android phone without video by Mariana Ramirez. How you doing? I'm doing well, video-less. Yeah, well that's alright. Most people I think will listen with just audio. So Angel, I want to just kind of jump right in and I want to know how has your life changed and how has school changed since you transferred to Life West? Uh, that's a good question. Um, let's see, life's, life's great. I'm really enjoying Life West. Um, I'm trying to see what's the, the biggest change. Um, I'd say probably the biggest change for me is I feel uh, the program is much more emphasized on the chiropractic aspect. So it's really focused heavy on the actual adjustment, uh, which I, um, I'm really loving. I'm loving that we're we about 10 different techniques that we're working on. I'm loving the Bay Area, a lot less rain, which has been pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, no, things are going really well. Good. So. I forgot to mention Carlos. Sorry, you jumped in right when I was beginning. How you doing? Oh, I'm not hearing you, Carlos. We're going to have to check your audio. If you go up to the little gear icon, that might help. So, Angel, I've, I had a similar experience in my undergrad where I picked a school and I was super excited. I, you know, I got there and the first little bit was all right, but then I just started feeling like it wasn't really what I expected. Mm -hmm. And... Often I was kind of contemplating, you know, checking out and transferring, but I really didn't have the courage. What did it take for you to make that decision? Uh, you know, it was actually my sixth quarter there at uh, Western States. Um, we had I had the joy of uh, Professor Dr. Carnes and Dr. Hoyer, um, and that pretty much did it for me. Uh, it was a quarter also that I had part one boards with it, and so um, we had part one boards. And then the next week we had about fifteen finals, and it pretty much broke me. Um, I passed part one boards, which was great, but I did not pass all my classes, and I've never worked so hard in my entire life and not succeeded in something. And so after that, I just realized that um, the workload that Western States was putting me through of having to draw blood and things like that was just not the way I saw chiropractic. Okay, so what does chiropractic mean to you? How would you define it? Uh, well, for me, you know, I feel chiropractic, our goal is um, to find and correct vertebral subluxations. And so one thing for me that's very important is to actually be able to use that word in a program, in our curriculum, and to be able to talk about things like innate, innate intelligence, subluxation. And those are words that were, I felt made fun of when I was at Western States. And that was something I really struggled with from the beginning. So you, you tend to lean a little more towards the philosophy? Yeah, very much so. Is that so. fair to say? Very much so. And how do you define the philosophy of chiropractic? Um, well, you know, the philosophy of chiropractic is based off, you know, much of the writings of B.J. Palmer. Um, you know, a good book that kind of touches a lot on it is uh, the Chiropractic Textbook by Stevenson. Um, so it really talks about, you know, 33 main principles that are part of chiropractic, and, and that's the way to focus, you know, as a chiropractor to treat one's patients. So did you feel that at Western States, the kind of the curriculum lacked philosophy? Definitely. I, I feel that it was very heavy on the science and pretty much lacking in the philosophy. Yeah, I have to say I'm, uh, I felt a little bit disappointed in that, uh, you know, even though we have philosophy classes, mm -hmm. we don't really go into it deep and we don't 
at least not yet. And so I have to say I'm only in the third quarter. Uh, and this semester looks a little more promising. Dr. Partner's class has been pretty exciting so far. We've only had one, two hours. But, um, you know, I, I'm i on one side of, the, you know, the philosophy versus science thing. And this, as I've said before, this isn't a debate. Uh, but even though I lean a little more towards the science side of it, I want that philosophy. I want to understand it. I want right. to understand how things have progressed. And so... Yeah, I, I'd agree with you that I'm a little disappointed in that I'm not getting that yet. And it sounds like maybe I won't and get as I much can, as I want. Yeah, my input is since I already went through the first philosophy class that we have, you can't see me, but my, you know, quote unquote philosophy, um, it's more like a biomechanics class. And the few philosophy comments that we get are pretty much putting down the quote-unquote straits of chiropractic and that's the part that I actually talked to Dr. Partner about that I don't agree with if we're gonna get exposed to something I don't want to have a bias against it going into it especially if I've never heard of it I don't want to have an influence outside of me closing me to investigating more just because people are making fun of it in class or even the teacher himself kind of promotes that type of, you know, biased opinion against it. So I don't know. I don't think it's his purpose to put us against it. It's just the way that it comes off, and the way that it's perceived in class. So I agree with you and Angel. I would like to have more philosophy without that sort of bias against it. More like here's the information. Now you do whatever you want with it. Right. So, Carlos, uh, you joined uh, the chiropractor program with me, and I understand that you're kind of exploring the option of other schools. Is that right? Yeah. I'm just kind of – can you hear me now? I can, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just checking out else is out there. Kind of like Mariana said, it's kind of hard to get a good idea of what the truth really is, I guess. Because everyone's so damn biased about what what they're at, you know what I mean? Or about UWS, everyone's biased over there. I'm sure there's some biased people at every school, you know what I mean? So it's really hard to actually try and figure out what you really want without actually getting any truth. Because no one's really going to give you any truth, no matter where you're at. It's just, I guess you just have to go and find out and learn on your own. But, I mean, I've met, like, great people like Angel who have shared their experience, you know, and it's it's appealing. So, I mean, but I'm just, I'm just going around. I'm going to start checking out other schools next week, and I'm just going in there with an the open mind and try and get an opinion of my own for every place instead of just kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, I mean, there's a lot of bad, a lot of bad, uh, stuff said not like really bad stuff but uh people kind of against like the philosophy based schools at like f what i got from uws you know what i mean so i mean i want to see what it's really about For yeah me, i think it's yeah i think it's a great I mean? idea uh i i went to five schools before i picked one and i don't think that was enough you know i wish i had gone to palmer i wish i had gone maybe even a Parker. Um, <clears throat> I just think it, it, it's so hard to really get to the core of what the school is going to be like. And, of course, that's why I'm doing this. That's why I want to share this this uh, program with everyone. So, Andrew, yeah, I want to I, I know – sorry, go ahead, Carlos. Oh, I was just going to say, I – and I – UWS is the only school I looked at, and, I mean, I was just so excited about the whole thing. I just pulled the trigger and – Put a tuition deposit and put a deposit on a house and just started there. I, there was the first school I after this I was like, oh, you know, I like the area, I like the school. This is where I'm going, and I really didn't know anything about chiropractic. And honestly, I still don't. Like it's so. I mean, there's so much out there, and then there's like I said, everything's biased, and some people say this, some people say that. It's so hard to get a true opinion on what what you really think. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a huge world, and I've been, even in just in the past week or two, like listening to hours and hours of podcasts, 
and it's overwhelming to me the differences in opinions and of course they're not presented as opinions they're presented as absolutes yeah uh and it does kind of drive me nuts but it, if this is what we're going into and you know going to load on 150k in debt i think it's worth spending that time so angel what with your perspective now what are the important things to look for in a school yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, you know, a few. You know, Carlos was talking about how he never really got the chance to look at other schools, and he picked it based on location, which I think a lot of students do. Yeah. Um, I think it's really important to go explore different schools, and I'm not trying to say that you know LifeWest is the right school and the only school, um, but it's for me personally the right school. And Western States was not a right fit, but there's students that love Western States that love the science aspect, and, and that's fantastic. So I think what one really needs to do is go tour the schools and, and find out where they feel that they connect with the students that are there, with the um, the curriculum and the location as well of where the school is located. It's kind of a trifecta, you know, you have to find a, a place that you'd be willing to live and enjoy, um, a school that you, you hopefully will enjoy their culture as well as, you know, there's obviously the academics and boards and all that fun stuff that we have to get through as well. I'm totally behind you. Um, and again, I, I visit lots of schools in Western States was the one that I chose. And you say in your video, I love how, how you mentioned kind of the feeling of despair that you had when you were at Western States and right. how alive and just how excited and happy you are now to be at, at Life West. And I, I would think, I can't say this for sure, but I would almost have reversed that for me. If I had gone to Life West before, you know, I think I would have felt as you felt here and when I moved. So it's, I don't think there is a right answer to which school you should go to. No, not at all. Where you feel comfortable and what, you know, what makes you excited about the profession. So I'm so... And I think if I can know. add something, I think it also has to do with your own beliefs, your own philosophy. Like Carlos was saying, he didn't really know what chiropractic is. He hasn't found it out for himself. And I think for me at least, having been adjusted by a really good chiropractor and my life changed completely is what helped me define what chiropractic is and what I want to give to other patients. And so based on that, I want to find a curriculum that fits my, my goals, what I want to deliver to my patients, which is good adjustments a variety of adjustments so if something is not working for them their body is not running I can say you know what I have like 50 other ways that I can adjust you not just one which is like, the theme I think is um, the main thing I don't like about what's states is that we're not offering a lot of variety. Hey Mariana I gotta interrupt you because your, oh. your audio is getting a little distorted so we can't really understand what you're saying right now. Okay. So let's give that just a minute. Um, hopefully that'll get better. Uh, but I want to hear what you said. Uh, while, so while we're waiting, I'm, I want to share something just real quick, uh, just to give you a chance to get that going. Um, I put together over the break, I hope you guys are seeing this now, um, on exploringchiropractic.com slash schools. I put together a map of all the schools in North America, and then also all the ones across the globe. And I think this is kind of cool for me to see how many schools there were out there. And so you guys can go here and, and take a look. There's uh, Palmer West, and I think you're going to check that one out, Carlos. Yeah. As well as, as Life West. So, you know, head to the website and check this out. But I want to jump over to Life West's webpage and have Angel tell us a little more about it. And I think they just updated the website, didn't they? They did. I'm actually on the main page. That last photo I was on there, but it's... Uh... No, Where I'm not oh. in that one. Where I'm jumping up or something. Yeah, I think after the hands, after Let's this see, one. Right there, I'm on the far like left. There the you in the, the back. far left. Yeah, is the Bijani transfer from Western States as well, and then I'm right behind him. Awesome. So you guys are all jumping right in front of the school. So yeah, Angel, <clears throat> tell me a little. Well, when you wake up in the morning and head over to school, what's kind of the first thing you see? At school? Yeah. What's the campus like? Uh, campus is uh, different than Western States, for sure. Um, the campus is uh, actually kind of a large, um, really large building. And from the outside, it doesn't seem very impressive, to be quite honest. 
Um, but when you walk inside, it's really open, and um, they basically have skylights through the whole school that kind of lights it up. And um, everyone kind of meets in the main area, which is called Sid Square, and it's named after Sid Williams. And it's mm -hmm. basically, there's a fountain, and it's kind of a TVs, and it's kind of where everyone meets in the center of campus. And then from there, it basically branches out in four directions, kind of north, east, south, and west. And uh, that's where the classrooms and lecture halls are um, basically located. Cool. Now, I visited it uh, maybe four four years ago or so. And, uh, yeah, I remember it was it was a little surprising to me. It's It has the appearance of a big warehouse. Right. Is that right? And on the inside, from what I remember, there's lots of just kind of bare brick walls and almost cement floors that, Gave me the feeling of kind of being in Costco. Is that how it is still, or? Um, well, I do love Costco, so I'm a little biased with that. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it's still concrete. That there's no ceiling tiles there. And, you know, part of the reason that um, they didn't put ceiling tiles in is much like the human body, we don't realize what's below our skin. And when you remove the ceiling tile, tiles, for example, you realize there's all these cables and connections and wires that make the campus what it is. And so that's kind of one of the founding ideas of the school, to have it as exposed as much as possible, it's kind of related to the human body, that there's a lot more under the skin than we realize. Okay, I had heard when I was there that there was a purposeful reason for them to do that, and that they had, but they never explained it, so I'm glad you shared that. That's kind of cool. So I do bring this up for a reason, though, because I wonder... At, at first it made me a little uncomfortable, and I'll be honest coming to Life West, uh, at first I was a little disappointed because it's an old, or I'm sorry, not to Life West, to Western States. You know, it used to be a Catholic girls' school, and some of the buildings have got to be from, I don't know, the 50s, 60s. Mm -hmm. I was a little disappointed at first, but does it does that matter to you, what the building is like? Um, not really. Uh, what, what I feel like what I get inside of the building is so valuable that, to be honest, I never really focus on what the actual building itself is like just because I feel like it's a uh, the environment there is so great I'd agree I me but I have to say that now I don't really think about it anymore so uh, I'm glad that you kind of share that opinion what did you think Carlos do you think that the campus is a big factor mm. no not really I don't. I never really thought about. It. I mean, if it's nice, it's nice. I mean, I'm sure if it's you don't want to be in an ugly place all day or some place where you feel cooped up. But I mean, they're not horrible at, at Western States, so I really don't have. I don't. I don't have much to say about that. Really, never thought about it. Cool. All right. No, that's good to hear. Um, so tell us a little more about the school. Um, wh where do you spend most of your day, Angel? Yeah, so now I'm, uh, I'm in my 10th quarter, so I'm in the outpatient clinic now. So the majority of my time is spent working in the clinic. Um, I do still have classes in the morning, uh, Monday through Friday, pretty much from 7.30 to about noon. Um, but from noon to about 7 is um, time that the clinic is open. And so I feel like I spend the majority of my day in the clinic, and that would be you know caring for patients and... Um, all that good stuff. So um, our clinic system is a two-floor clinic. There's a bottom floor and top floor, and um, I'm on the bottom floor, and I spend most of my day there. Before the show, you were telling Mariana a little bit about your experience in clinic. How's it been? Ah, oh, clinic's been really great. Um, so the, the way that the program is uh, structured at uh, Life West is we're required to bring 10 new patients into our clinic. Um, to graduate, so it's a graduation requirement, um, which is what it's going to be like in practice. We're going to have to actually go out and get patients as well. Uh, so I, I was pretty fortunate to have this um, really great uh, lady that works at the school. She's a Spanish speaker, and she has nine of her family members coming in with her now, her children, her grandparents, her parents, and a couple uncle and, and aunts. And it's just this really amazing, humbling experience to have a family all come in to be under your care and then just have these great results and show up early to their appointments, just be so thankful and that's yeah, been it's been really great. I'm really, really loving clinic. So you're bilingual. I am, I am. And do you enjoy using that language? 
in the clinic? I do. It's funny. I didn't really think about it when I went to chiropractic school, but being bilingual is such an asset. The uh, especially the Spanish-speaking community here in the in the states is is really underserved with Spanish-speaking providers, and so to be able to offer that to my patients is just really a, a gift that I'm really fortunate to have. In your YouTube video, and maybe it's in the more recent one, I can't remember, you mentioned that at LifeWest you have lots of opportunities to work internationally. What are those opportunities? Uh, I don't recall saying anything about international opportunities, um, but um, there are opportunities to do mission trips. Um, okay, actually, that's... As a Western State student, you have that um, opportunity as well. Um, there's a few different groups. Um, I think one of them is called Spinal Missions and... Um, Liam Schubel's group has it, and the only requirement is that you are a chiropractic student, and you're basically able to go on these mission trips, and depending on your level of experience, you either do intake work, or if you do have adjusting experience, you know, you're basically then able to, to adjust patients. So that was one thing when I was at Western States I was really wanting to do, and I went to student services, and I was told that we had no options to do so. Uh, but now that I'm uh, at LifeWest, I realize that these are actually open to any student. So if you're at Western States or Palmer or Parker, any of those schools, you are able to go on a mission trip. It's just not sponsored by the school. Yeah, so that's pretty interesting because I've, before I uh, started school, I was almost thinking of going into like the Peace Corps and I really am interested in going overseas and, and doing this. So Spinal Missions is one. Right, that girl there on the front actually, that's Amy Logan. So she's a student at LifeWest. Awesome. And how long do you go? Uh, it's usually a week. So that one looks like that's the El Salvador trip, and that I believe was last year. And okay. it's a week-long trip, and you adjust anywhere between two to 500 people. I've, I've heard a lot about this uh, during my meetings, like with Palmer. And they go, you know, they go to Haiti. They go to all over the world. Correct. Correct. It, it's pretty amazing. I mean, this is just one of many groups. There's about four or five different... Um, if you just type in chiropractic mission trip on Google you'll get four or five different things that come up and uh, just a really great way to get your hands um, working on, on various patients and really working on your clinical skills and uh, you're always working with licensed docs that are overseeing everything you do so you're not just out there being a rogue adjuster. That's awesome. So I want to give a little time to Carlos and Mariana to ask any questions and let's start with Mariana uh, if you wanted to finish what you were saying before. <laughs> Yeah, can you tell me where I cut off, or should I just try to summarize from the mm -hmm. beginning? Go saying? ahead and go ahead and summarize. <laughs> okay, so I was saying that to me, the way that I would now look for a school is thinking of what I want to deliver to my patients, and find a curriculum that gives me those tools to be the doctor that I have in mind for the people that I want to help. And the situation that I'm in right now is finding out that we only learn one technique being at Western States, which is diversified. And I would really want to have the opportunity to learn about Thompson, SOT, Gonstead, you know, just there's so many techniques that having only one in school, it feels really limiting. And I just want to be able to help people and if they're not responding to my treatment then try a different way and if not then another way. I, I don't want to ever give up on a patient because I can't adjust them or because my treatment is not working for them. I want to be able to help them no matter what. So you feel that the the limitation of, of just getting the one technique might keep you from doing that? Yes. So, Angel, what techniques are taught at LifeWest? Uh, so, let's see. We um, are taught diversified, Gonstead, uh, drop table, activator, um, SOT, um, <laughs> knee chest, toggle. Yeah. Uh, these are all included in the curriculum, or are these? Uh, there's electives? two that are electives that I mentioned. Activator and SOT are electives, and knee chest as well. But the core adjustments that we get credit for in clinic as a standard adjustment is diversified Gonstead, toggle, uh, drop table, and there is one more that is escaping me right now. All right, and you mentioned uh, the. There's lots of clubs at LifeWest, from what I remember visiting them too. 
Uh, you had trouble starting a club at Western States. Were you able to get that up and running down there? Uh, yeah, so there's 38 active clubs at um, LifeWest, meaning they actually meet. That was a struggle I had at Western States, but the clubs didn't really meet when I was there, and I think it's just with the course load, it's hard to be able to do so. Uh, the club I tried starting at uh, Western States was a veterinary chiropractic club. Uh, there's already one at uh, Western at Life West called the Animal Chiropractic Club, and so I'm a part of that. But I did start a club at um, Life West that's called Spectrum, and it's a GLBT club. Okay. Yeah, we have. I think it's somewhere around 12 clubs. I just started one. My first meeting is on Tuesday, and I'm super nervous about whether anybody's going to show up because <laughs> the attendance at m many of the club meetings is pretty low uh, and yeah I think it might be because of the the course load so do you feel that the course load at Life West is just a bit lighter? Yes uh, I mean we, we have the same number of hours of classes but the amount of studying that we have to do is is not nearly as intensive as it was at um, at Western States, which gives me a lot more time to go to weekend seminars and work on adjusting and I'm playing tennis now and I'm able to do a cleanse and do yoga and work out and I just have much more angel time now, which is really nice. Why do you think that is that it's that you don't have to study as much? You know, I think the difference is is, you know, I, I remember vividly at, at Life West I'm sorry, at Western States having, you know, fifty pages of notes to get through, like <laughs> Kaminsky notes, for example, to get through for physiology, you know, it's a huge stack. And when you would ask, well, what do I need to focus thing. on, <laughs> it would be like, oh, yeah. yeah, right, exactly. So now I just feel like the, the material is much more focused to clinically what we really need to know. So we're, we're really kind of more guided on this is the stuff that's really important. I feel like they both schools go over the same amount of material. It just in regards to what we actually need to study, I feel like it's much more focused at LifeWest. So it's we're going to go over 100 pages, but these 20 pages are the, the meat of what you really need to know for clinical practice. Carlos, you got anything to ask? Well, my question was kind of based on like a Mariana's. Is like, okay, your cur Life West curriculum might incorporate like four or five different techniques that you have to know compared to University of Western States where it's uh, diversified to the main one. Do you feel, Angel, do you feel that it's harder to learn all five different techniques and be really good at all of them? Or like, do you feel like you lack in some of the techniques or compared to just learning one? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I feel that there are three that I am much more interested in than the other two. Um, for example, one of them is toggle, which is an upper cervical, which you're only adjusting basically the two top bones. And um, that's not really something I'm super interested in, but there are a lot of kids in school that that's really their main focus. They want to be upper cervical practitioners. I'm, I'm more of a full spine um, person, so I enjoy adjusting extremities or, you know, whatever needs to be adjusted, I w I'm happy to adjust. And yeah. so that is my focus. So I put the majority of my time into that, that type of um, practice. So is my toggle adjusting very good? No, it's not. But it's not what I'm focusing, what I personally focus on. Whereas there's other kids that are really focused in doing upper cervical and their extremity adjusting probably isn't that great. So yeah. it, it gives no. you the opportunity to focus on what you want. That was like one of the main things I always hear when comparing schools is like, oh, well, we learn one and we're experts at one or two compared to other schools while they try and teach 12 different ones, but they're not an expert in any. So right, like, right. No, I mean, yeah. I, I feel like I'm far from being an expert. You know, I'm just still in school, and I, I feel yeah. like that expertise comes much after graduation. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, but um, I, I feel that my adjusting has improved greatly since I've transferred, and that being, if I only have my diversified bag of tricks that I learned at Western States, some of the issues I'm being presented with in clinic or challenges I'm presented with, I wouldn't have known how to adjust. But since I had some, oh, some drop table knowledge and some Gonstead knowledge, I kind of was able to pull that together to, to find a way to make it work, whereas the one way I learned wasn't working, I was able to kind of pull out of my bag of tricks a couple other techniques. Yeah. I mean, there's some, there's been times where I had a personal experience where I, like, wanted to see if I could get my shoulder adjusted, and they were having trouble. They didn't know any, like, 
extremity adjustments or they couldn't remember any and they mm -hmm. just kept saying, oh, well, let's try this or let's try this. And then also sometimes when I'm getting work, what I'd get work on in the clinic, uh, d diversified for me, like I'm a big guy, you know, so, but I don't know if it's just I'm a bigger guy or just how it is because I don't know how it feels for other people. But to me, sometimes even just getting a thoracic adjustment with diversified kind of felt uncomfortable for me. So I didn't know if that's how it feel for someone else. If that's how mm -hmm. like other people felt, I felt like real crushed and real like a lot of pressure in my chest and everywhere else. So like if I don't like it, I, I wouldn't want to do it to to someone else. But then I'm not sure if just because I'm a big guy or if, or if that's how it feels for everyone. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I am interested in learning a lot of techniques and I want to treat, be able to treat anything that's thrown at me. So like you might be right, it might be eliminated only being – only learning like diversify because I want to be good at extremities too. I really, I'm really interested in extremities. So I like to be really good at that too. Just anything that's thrown at me is what I want to do. So I'm just like, I want to bet. And do you, do you know any, do you have any comparison for us towards uh, clinical hours? Like, do you know the difference in clinical hours from just even university of Western States to life West? Do you know like what students at your, Students, your friends from University of Western States, do you guys have the same amount of clinical hours? Or Right. Well, to, to graduate the CCE mandates, you have to have, I believe, it's 250 outpatient adjustments, 50 student adjustments, and I want to say something like 200 and maybe 300 clinical um, hours in the clinic where you're basically clocked in these are how many hours. Um, what I found was most people at Western States just did the minimums that they needed. So it's like I'm going to get my 250, my 50, and my hours. Whereas what I find it at Life West, um, we still have to have those same hours. But for example, I'm you know hoping to get three, four hundred adjustments while I'm in clinic, and my hours, I'm, I'm already, I already think I have all the hours I need because I'm there all the time. Um, so that's just the difference is like we're able to be there as much as we want, and we can do more than the minimum because we're able to book our own schedules where. At uh, Western States, my understanding is um, they tell you when you're going to be in clinic. You can't say, oh, you know, I want to do it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. They're going to say, uh, nope, Carlos, it's going to be Monday from this time, Tuesday from this time, and Friday from this time. Yeah. Hey, Angel, we're getting short on time, and I want to respect your time. I know we've got school starting tomorrow again. So we got, we have a lot of studying to do at Western <laughs> States. But hey, I want to ask just a couple more quick questions and then uh, let you go. So, if you could change one thing about Life West, what would it be? Probably their attendance policy. Uh, they're very, very strict on attendance. Uh, that is different than Western States, who was not as strict. Um, so they would do what's called overcutting. So if you miss more than 20% of your class, you're automatically dropped from the class. Wow. So they just. I actually you think that's good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I'm a little worried about uh, how many people <laughs> skip class. <laughs> so if you if you were to talk to a student who's thinking of going to chiropractic school, which schools would you recommend? Oh uh, well, this is based off my bias, obviously being very heavy philosophy based. But I would uh, talk about Life West, uh, Life in Georgia, and Sherman in uh, South Carolina. Those would be the three that I would I would recommend um, for students. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you so much for your time. We're going to wrap it up now. Don't go away. Uh, for those watching, thanks for joining us live on Exploring Chiropractic. And you can always find the show on exploringchiropractic.com slash hangouts. And thanks again, Angela Joa from Life Chiropractic College West. You can find out more about LifeWest at lifewest.edu. Thanks a lot to Carlos and Mariana as well. Thank you.